Hello friends, welcome to our channel Daily Doctor. Today let us discuss about malaria. All of us know that malaria is infection caused by the mosquito bite. Only female anopheles mosquito spreads this infection. So let us discuss in detail about the, uh, the mosquito and the life cycles associated with the plasmodium spe species. The plasmodium vivox, plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium the OLA, these are the main parasites which result in the infection, the malarial disease. It has got uh, the two life cycles, mainly the definitive host life cycle that occurs in the female anopheles mosquito and the intermediate host that is man where the asexual cycle takes place. Where the sexual cycle takes place that is called as definitive host. So, mode of transmission, man acquires the infection mainly by the bite of female anopheles mosquito. When the sporozoids which are present in the salivary gland of the mosquito are transmitted into the cutaneous venules, then they will enter into the hepatocytes. Okay, rarely through the blood transfusion or placental transmission, malaria can occur. Humans in humans, it is the life cycle of the plasmodium is called as asexual. That is why it is also called as the in uh, the man is called as intermediate host. So, what are the uh, stages which occur in the human life cycle? Firstly, it is the pre-erythrocytic stage that is pre-erythrocytic cisogony, erythrocytic cisogony, and gametogony. What happens in pre-erythrocytic pre stage or hepatic stage is once the parasite enters inside your body, the mosquito has, you have got the mosquito bite, the sporozoids which are present in the salivary gland of the mosquito, they will enter your body through the cutaneous venules, then they will directly enter into the blood circulation. These sporozoids, the infective form of the parasite, they will directly enter the liver within the 30 minutes. They will enter here into the liver. Then what happens is with the help of the circumsporozoids which are present on the surface of the sporozoids, they will bind on the receptors of the hepatocytes. Once they bind the hepatocytes, what happens is the sporozoids taken inside the liver cell or the hepatocytes the sporozoids which are present uh, in the blood, they will enter the hepatocytes. The entry of the sporozoids inside the liver, once it happens, these sporozoids all are getting converted into the trophozoids. The next form of the, next developmental form of the sporozoid inside the hepatocyte. Next what happens is, trophozoid undergoes several, uh, several division. Imagine this is the sporozoid, it has developed into the sporozoid. This sporozoid undergoes several divisions to form the merozoids. This is called as pre-erythrocytic schizoid. One trophozoid has undergone several divisions to form a merozoid inside the hepatocyte. This is called as pre-erythrocytic schizoid. It contains several merozoids. Once the rupture of the hepatocyte, this is your hepatocyte, these are the merozoids. Once the rupture occurs, is, there is a release of merozoids. These, uh, the merozoids are released into the bloodstream. Once they are released into the bloodstream, what happens next is, they will go and they will directly attack the RBCs. Here is your RBC, here is your RBC which is attacked by these merozoids. Once the merozoids attack the RBC, next stage, the second stage actually starts, he, starts here, it is the erythrocytic stage. What happens in the erythrocytic stage is, the merozoids which are attacked on the RBC, they will enter inside the RBC through the endocytosis. Next, what a similar, uh, similar thing will happen as the merozoids will get converted again into the Trophozoids. These merozoids are going to develop into trophozoids. Once they develop into the trophozoite inside the RBC, this is your RBC, they will develop into the trophozoite. The early trophozoite will appear in the signet ring form. This is how they will appear in the signet ring form. Some of them will in the late trophozoites, some of them will enlarge to form the amoeboid appearance. This is all this process is occurring inside your RBC only. They are 
the merozoids have developed into trophozoites once they have developed into the more infective stage they have to consume the food so what is the food available for them inside your rbc it is only hemoglobin which is present inside the rbc these trophozoid feed on this hemoglobin they will digest it and they will release that undigested product in the form of hematin hematin or uh, uh, hematin and iron porphyrin these are the undigested product iron porphyrin this will this is called as the hemozoin pigment this is the hemozoin pigment or it is also called as malarial pigment then what happens next is uh, once this malarial pigment or the hemozoin pigment is releasing there is a relapse of the fever malarial paroxysm of fever at the end of each cycle will occur once there is a rupture of the rbc this hemozoin pigment and the merozoids are released this these are the late trophozoites in the rbc okay which are feeding on the hemoglobin they will further develop to form a cisogony they will produce again they will produce daughter merozoites inside the rbc this is the rbc inside you are having the merozoite this is in the form of a rosette shape rosette appearance called as erythrocytic schizoid this is called as the erythrocytic schizoid once the release uh, the rupture of this rbc occur now imagine the rbc rupture has occurred what are the products are releasing here these are the merozoites which are released and also the hemozoin pigment which is released this will re lead to the increased uh, high degree or uh, the high degree temperature in case of the patient and malarial paroxysm of fever the fever is recurring recurrencing at 48 hours or in in some species it is at 72 hours that is uh, when the rupture of the rbc occurs now next is the gametogony the third stage is the gametogony this is the last stage in the human cycle what are the merozoites which are released in the blood circulation from the rupture of the rbc these are going to develop into trophozoites some of them only not all the merozoites some of them will develop into trophozoite and the rest of them will die these trophozoites now they are getting converted into the sexual forms they will develop into the gametocytes the female gametocyte will appear some or uh, some at, at this shape and the male gametogony male gametocyte of the plasmodium falciparum the they will appear in banana shape only in case of plasmodium falciparum they will appear round in case of plasmodium vivox plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium malaria banana shaped gametocytes if you are finding in the smear that means the patient has got infection with plasmodium falciparum okay once these gametocytes are developed they are important for the transmission as infective form to the mosquito once the mosquito bites to a malaria infected person or a malarial patient the gametocytes if they are entering inside the mosquito if the uh, the mosquito consumes the blood meal during its blood meal if it consumes these gametocytes there the mosquito life cycle will again continue now we will move on to the mosquito life cycle what happens next in the mosquito life cycle imagine the mosquito has uh, the patient has got mosquito bite the blood during its blood meal it has taken the gametocytes these gametocytes once they have uh, entered inside the mosquito they will start developing inside the mosquito body they develop into male gametocyte and female gametocyte these male and female gametocytes inside the mosquito's body they will get combined and fertilized to form the zygote this zygote further develops into oocyanate that motile elongated form of the this zygote is the oocyanate in the midgut this oocyanate further develops into oocyst then this oocyst will undergo sporogony that it will undergo meiosis 
meiosis to form the sporozoites so as i have already told you sporozoites are the infective form these sporozoites will be spindle shaped these sporozoites what happens is these sporozoites migrate to the salivary gland all this meiosis and the development of the okinet is occurring in the stomach wall of the mosquito once they develop into the sporozoid they will be transformed they will be trans tra transferred to the salivary gland of the mo mosquito from here once these sporozoids are stored in the salivary gland next the human life life cycle will continue once this the mosquito bites another person the spread of the disease occurs through this infective forms so this completes the life cycle about the malaria parasite now let me tell you in brief about the life cycle here you can see this here is the person imagine this is a person the mosquito has bite him now the mosquito after the mosquito bite it contains this sporozoite they have entered inside the liver cell of the person they will develop into uh, the trophozoites then they will form the pre erythrocytic schizoont there the rupture of the hepatocyte occur rupture of the hepatocyte where the release of the merozoites occur these merozoites now they attack on the rbc they will enter inside the rbc they will develop into trophozoite play trophozoite then again develop into the schizoont form then the rupture of the rbc occurs again these merozoites are released some of them develop into the sexual forms the male gametocyte and the female gametocytes which are consumed by the mosquito during its mus uh, blood meal of the infected patient these gametes inside the mosquito's gut wall they will develop into zygote after fertilization then it will further develop to okinetosis then to the sporozoites these sporozoites are stored in the salivary gland of the mosquito once again whenever this mosquito bites another person the spread of the malarial disease occurs this is all about the human cycle and the mosquito cycle in the malarial life cycle malarial parasite life cycle this is all about today's video in the next video we are going to talk about the um, malarial parasites the actual malarial parasites and their uh, complications associated with and lab diagnosis part if you find this life cycle informative please do subscribe to our channel daily doctor thank you for watching